This flight paves the way. Tom Stafford and John Young, Eugene Cernan, are now on certainly one of man's greatest adventures on their way to the moon. This flight is Operation Dress Rehearsal. Uh, and that's not the formal name of it, but that's what it is. Because this flight is doing exactly everything that's going to take place in July. If all goes well, it'll go in July with this flight doing everything exactly on the same time schedule as the landing on the moon in July. And they're going to bring that spacecraft down to within 10 miles of the moon's surface. That's the point where the mission doesn't uh, go as the landing will, because that's as high as they go. And then they go back and rejoin the command module and come back to Earth on exactly the time schedule, so that the sun conditions, the shadow conditions on the moon's surface, everything will be as precisely like it is now as they can possibly uh, make it. This flight of Apollo 10, after a blast off this morning, uh, some four hours and 13 minutes ago, has been going, with very minor exceptions, absolutely perfectly. It's going well, and Apollo 10 is well on the way toward the moon. The television color, television camera works beautifully, as we've seen. Sometime later on in this flight, we're going to see uh, the Earth and the moon with that uh, color television camera, and those pictures should indeed be spectacular. Man's great adventure, another flight to the moon, well on the way with the flight of Apollo 10. This is Walter Cronkite at our CBS News headquarters at the Kennedy Space Center. Good afternoon. Up, up, and away from the Apollo 10 crewmen who are up, up, and away themselves past the 130,000-mile halfway mark to the moon. Radioing to Earth what they insisted was their own version of the song, they continue to transmit amazing colored television pictures of the Earth, the moon, and themselves. The impromptu disc jockey performance and complaints about the drinking water were the only things unexpected on this clockwork precise brush with the moon, the major perils of which lie ahead. This is a CBS News special report. The flight of Apollo 10. Reporting from the CBS News Apollo headquarters in New York, correspondent David Shoemacher. Good afternoon. Astronauts Tom Stafford, Gene Cernan, and John Young have thrown the switch. And for the fourth time in the flight of Apollo 10, we are joining them in space. It seems safe to say that they're enjoying the idea up there as much as we are here on Earth. And up there, being inside the spacecraft with these first pictures today of that particular view. The astronauts began their transmission about 15 minutes early today, beginning with pictures of the Earth. And there is the shield that the astronauts, at least, consider and, uh, a work of art. This is uh, obviously our patch. How does it come through and come? Uh, not so good, really. It looks like you've got uh, some other intense lighting from the back and the side. Uh, if you could get the lighting more directly on the patch, it'd be better. Yeah, that's the sun coming in. The sun has been causing them more of a problem today than in yesterday's telecast. Uh, just a few moments ago, they said that they doubted that they would be able to show us pictures of the moon today as they had hoped because the sun and the moon are so close together from their vantage point uh, that the sun overrides the moon. There's John Young. Yeah, John coming through nicely on the tube. What was the three fingers for? That's about as excited as you'll ever see John Young. CRM of the day. Oh, that's beautiful. Early space. We're going to put some more things in it, but we just ran out of time. <laughs> Roger. Uh, is this also your emblem? Do you see any resemblance between the card and the guy holding the card? Uh, now that you mention it. That, of course, is Charlie Brown. 
which will be the code name for John Young when he is alone in the spacecraft as the lunar module descends near the moon's surface. Now you're going to bring on that wizard here. Okay, we got uh, Snoopy now. That shield, the mission shield for Apollo 10, the astronauts have taken a good deal of razzing for putting just about everything connected with their m mission, a portrayal of it, in that. Take you over to the spacecraft. Uh, I do picking up Gene now. I got rather strong backlighting from uh, the window. That is backlit. The camera, of course, set for the brighter light, and when the sun is behind them as it is, uh, they you're not able to see their faces as well. It looks like Cernan is going to try to block the hatch so that we get a better view. These men understand television. Just there, you all drawing the window shades there? How is that any better? Yes, indeed. We didn't get a chance to shave this morning before this show. I hope that doesn't bother anybody. Uh, it doesn't bother us. Uh, definition is real good. We can uh, just about read your wristwatch there, Gene. Roger, looks like it is about uh, 1600. 1605? 1605 Cape Time. 1605 and still keeping Cape perfect time. Roger, we copy. The voice of mission control, that is the capsule communicator, is Bruce McCandless, one of the astronauts, but has not yet flown. Yeah. Roger, we synchronized our watches here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Looks like we got a good piece of gear here, Bruce. Yeah, it does. Give me a wizard. Give me a wizard at TP over here. Roger. Give me the top. Apollo 10 now 132,000 miles from Earth, just a little more than 100,000 miles from the moon. With the zoom lens pulled all the way back on that wide angle, uh, it appears that there is much more room in that spacecraft than there really is. It's still pretty cramped. It's apparently John Young down below. Well, our problem is trying to figure out which way is up and which way is down. That is and it's for one time, you have your choice. If you don't like things right side up, you can go upside down. So I do down here. <laughs> okay, we got one of you in each direction. And it's really a ball up here, living in zero G, believe me. That's the only way to fly. <laughs> Once you get going, the cost per individual past your mile becomes rather reasonable. <laughs> Strange transformation of, about uh, this I crew. I noticed, uh, boy, it sure picks up the sun's reflection and density no matter where you go. That little reflection's coming out of my window uh, behind me. Oh, uh, Roger, what f stop are you all using now? I believe here, wait a minute. On the ground, yeah, Stafford and Young are two of the quietest men you've ever, yeah, never yeah. talked to. Still good color? Uh, yes, indeed. And they've turned out to be two of the most talkative astronauts in space we've ever had. <laughs> hey, hey. I just do whatever he says. Hey. <laughs> Hey, Tom, uh, the flight 
Sergeant here wants you to be sure to log all your exercise. I got gotcha. you. Stafford chewing gum again. Dynamics like that, you guys ought to be pretty good at this PTC mode. I need to tell you. Right, that's what we got about 10 hours sleep last night. Good, Roger. 